Hey guys, a little Saturday morning chat. Uh, sorry I haven't done much of that lately. Um, I just got back from a trip to Utah, spent a little time in the mountains. Um, and quite honestly, I haven't had a whole lot that I thought was worthy of taking up hard drive space on the YouTubes there. So just haven't done the Saturday morning chat here in a little bit. But uh, I do have, I don't want to call it breaking news, it's not that great and important. But uh, there are going to be some things going on, some differences here in my channel here in the next uh, year or so. So I'll run through those very quickly. Uh, first and foremost, I have not been able to find a project car. Uh, I've got a couple different Volkswagen types that I'm really interested in. That would be the Volkswagen Thing and the Volkswagen Single Cab Pickup. And in the Pickup, uh, Pre-67 is what I'm looking for which is the old split window bus, not the bay window. And uh, those are, as everybody keeps saying, those are like hen's teeth, man. They're rare. And uh, people want a lot for them, and rightfully so. Um, I don't want to pay a lot for them, not because I don't think they're valuable, just because I don't have a lot of money. So I'm just looking for the right deal to come along, and that's going to take some time. There's no doubt about it. Uh, it's just not something that you can... Uh, run down to the end of your block and find. So I'm going to be patient with it and not buy the wrong project. Uh, I've looked at a couple projects and thought that I was going to buy them and they were just the wrong project. So I didn't go ahead with them. So my supposition here is that uh, I won't find the right project in the next few months. So I need to start another project, one that I know I can get a hold of. And uh, one that I've had on my list for about 20 years. And that project is going to be a guitar build. Um, think of it... I uh, hate to use the Star Wars reference. I'm not a big uh, sci-fi guy. But uh, the Jedis build their own lightsaber. And I think as a guitar player, I, I find a dire need to make my own weapon, my own guitar. And uh, I got my first Warmoth catalog back in high school. And Warmoth sells pieces and parts for guitars. Sorry, I have my Strat right here. And I just keep staring at it. Um, but they sell pieces and parts for guitars. And they sell pre-made bodies, pre-made necks, all the hardware, all the pieces and parts. And uh, sort of by the end of the time you fill up your shopping cart with pieces and parts, you've paid twice or three times what it would cost to get a really high-quality guitar from a well-respected manufacturer. So I never did build a Warmoth guitar. I didn't didn't find the value in it. You know, just simply assembling pieces didn't have a whole lot of value. And then at the end of the day, your guitar costs you more than uh, what you could have bought one for. So um, had that on the list, never pulled the trigger, just didn't find it right. Now I'm at a point in my life where... Uh, I've done an extremely large amount of research on guitar building, on components, techniques, uh, jointery, if you will, theory about guitar tone, different woods, different pickups, hardware, you name it. Uh, I've researched it as much as I think uh, I can research it in my spare time and still keep my sanity. That said... Um, the last few months I've spent watching videos on YouTube about guitar making. Probably watched no fewer than 300. I'd say probably even more, both on the acoustic and the electric end of things. Um, guitar building and luthiery is just as important on an electric guitar as it is on an acoustic guitar. Uh, I think... You can hear the errors in an acoustic guitar much more readily than an electric guitar, but finding the magic guitar, no, uh, as soon as you pick up a guitar and play it, whether it's electric or acoustic, it's evident whether or not that guitar has the magic. There, that's the way I want to say it. Um, so it's every bit as important on an electric guitar to have the right wood, the right joints, the right uh, precision in the instrument. So um, this is something I want to tackle, something I find fascinating. 
Um, at the end of the day, uh, I've played hundreds of guitars and I've bought a couple. <laughs> if that tells you anything, there are guitars that I've picked up that have had the magic and I haven't bought them. And I've wanted them and I've thought about them. And every one of those guitars I have in my head and I could tell you the year, the make, the model, the color, uh, not so much what pickups they had in them because most of them, they have the magic before you plug them in. And uh, most recently, I played a 74 SG, Gibson SG, and uh, it had been beat around pretty pretty well. I mean, you know, rash all over it. And that guitar just sang. I've, I've played a few dozen SGs over the years. Most of them have been kind of okay. Um, this particular one that I played, and it's been a few months back, was just phenomenal. I never plugged it in. It was in the guitar store. The guy kept wanting to give me a cord to plug it in. You didn't need to. That guitar was just phenomenal. Uh, if the pickups were dead in it, you could replace the pickups quite easily. But uh, that guitar just sang. And uh, you'll find that the older the guitar is, a lot of times the better they sound. You know, you get a brand new guitar out of the box, you know, uh, a 2012 Stratocaster or something like that. A lot of times they're just dead. And uh, the reason is they haven't had, the resins haven't had time to crystallize. And if they had had time to crystallize, um, you know, there's just stuff in them that just doesn't come out. They got to, they got to leach out over time. They got to bleach a little bit. They got to oxi oxidize. Uh, I don't know how to explain it, but you know, fiber, wood fibers are like straws, you know, and uh, the moisture has to get sucked through the straw and get out of there. And uh, those old guitars, even some of the crappier old guitars play really well. I know I've had uh, my hands on a handful of Rickenbackers that have just been phenomenal guitars as well. Um, Gibsons tend to be very good. Uh, Strats, whew, few and far between uh, on those for me to find really great playing Strats. Um, 60s Strats, yeah. Awesome guitars. Uh, but the new... The new wave of strats, uh, they're okay. Uh, this one I have here, uh, I think is an 06. And it's a good playing guitar, um, but it's nothing compared to that one back there. That's an 88 Kramer um, neck through. This is a single piece bolt on neck, one piece uh, maple with a rosewood fretboard bolted on. And uh, that guitar back there is a three-piece laminated maple neck, uh, neck through body. You can see that blue stripe going down. Uh, that's one piece from the top of the headstock to the tail where my uh, strap bolts on. And uh, that Kramer back there is uh, ten times the guitar of this Strat is, no doubt. Uh, don't even plug them in. You can just tell. Um, everybody who's ever held that Kramer in their hands who's a guitar player has... Uh, commented on what a great guitar it is and uh, my desire <laughs> is to make another guitar of that quality of that caliber um, so I'm rambling now but uh, I'm going to try and wrap this up these are my notes for the guitar build I may make two guitars instead of just one I think setting up the jigs and everything is going to take a ton of time so I think the actual carving on the guitar, the making on the guitar uh, is going to be quite less than the setup time so I think running dual guitars at the same time I think I'll be able to build them just a little bit slower than building a single but pretty close you know um, so that's what I want to do is build two of them at the same time that's my plan. I don't know if that'll happen. It'll be a completely Greg Porter custom design. So there will not be another guitar on the planet that's like this. I am not going to take that Strat and trace it. I know a lot of guys do that for their first build. And a lot of guys do that for their entire career. Uh, they never build their own guitar. They always copy someone else's, which there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, it's just not the way I do things. So uh, I've thought about everything. And uh, one of our YouTube brothers 
uh, knows a premier guitar builder, a world-renowned guitar builder, and uh, has offered to introduce me to him. And uh, it's a matter of, I don't know if I'll have the time to take the trip up there. I think that's an invaluable offer, uh, an offer that if I had the means, I would leave today, <laughs> today, and uh, come up and visit and uh, tour through the guitar making facility and uh, hopefully shake hands with the owner. Uh, he's a phenomenally um, informed person. He has done so much research and has shared a lot of that research. Some of it he's kept very close to his chest and rightfully so um, because he sells guitars for a living. And if you let your secrets out, everybody copies you. I would offer that uh, you give 10 people the same cake mix and tell them to bake a cake. You will have 10 different cakes. So I've never found a reason to hold information to yourself. Because if it's your information and you own it and you did the research and you know every bit and piece to it, uh, you can give it away and people can attempt to copy you, but until they have your depth of knowledge, there's no possible way they can replicate what you're doing. And even then, uh, if they worked side by side with you for a decade, they probably still could not replicate uh, what you do. Everybody's an individual. Everybody does things differently. Everybody has different tendencies. So, um, you know, there's a little pontification for you. But uh, the other thing I'm doing, so uh, I'm going to try and wrap this up before it gets too long, as I'm concentrating heavily, heavily, heavily on my guitar playing. Back in November, I made a decision that uh, I wanted to improve my guitar playing skill dramatically. And I apologize for the backlight there, guys. Um, I want to improve my guitar playing ability dramatically. Um, I know what it takes to develop the skill on a musical instrument to a very high level. Uh, I was graded a virtuoso percussionist on solo, snare drum, and drum set as a high schooler. I used to practice about three hours a day, seven days a week. I did that for, I think, about eight years. So, um, very regimented very dedicated and uh, very technically proficient at one point in my life with percussion. I want to have that same virtuosity on the guitar. So I have decided uh, this year, and I started doing this I think back in November, uh, having my practices change, my practice sessions change. In the past, it was pick up the guitar and just start noodling. Every once in a while I'd pick out a song or open up a book and you know, kind of learn some things, but uh, very unfocused practice, really, really, really just for fun, relaxation. I'm a self-taught guitar player. Uh, I started in about sixth grade. I just picked it up, and I had a poster, and I read the poster, and, you know, I knew what a triad was, you know, a one, three, five kind of chord. I knew what a minor chord was. I knew what a seventh was, and I think that's all I knew. Uh, because I took organ lessons as a third grader for about a year, uh, and that's what I got out of organ lessons was was what a C chord was. And I applied that C chord to the poster that had all the dots up and down the neck and told you where the notes were, and I found a C, and I found an E, and I found a G, and I made a C chord. And then I looked for, you know, okay, if I did that with a C, can I do it with a D? And that's how I learned guitar. And so when I learned all my chord forms were up the neck because that's where I found the notes on the chart. Didn't play very many open stringed chords. And so when I got together and actually started playing with other people in late in grade school, early in high school, and I'd say, hey, okay, do a C chord. And I'd play my C chord up on the uh, 10th fret there. Uh, everybody would go, well, that's not a C chord. A C chord looks like this. And they'd show me, and I'd go, well, I've never seen one down there. And I went back to my poster and, uh, you know, started figuring out, well, hell, you can play those down low. That's why it sounds uh, so much more bassy <laughs> on all those records. So uh, anyway, um, 
had to reteach myself to play guitar after I found that out, which was great. Um, you know, so I've got the things in my head are completely different than most guitar players in terms of where things happen on the neck. Uh, but anyway, self-taught and I want to get much better. So I'm practicing now with a purpose. I have about a, a 30 minute to an hour schedule that I practice on, do a little bit of warm up, do about uh, 10 to 15 minutes worth of scales with a metronome. And uh, if anybody's ever worked with a metronome, um, after they've learned to play an instrument, you just want to stab the metronome in the face uh, because it's always right and you're always wrong. And uh, so I've been doing 16th notes at about uh, 80 beats per minute and uh, on up to 90 and sometimes to 100, but I start to get sloppy and I refuse to let myself play sloppy anymore. I'm a very sloppy player and I've always just kind of gotten by and I refuse to do that anymore. So uh Anytime we get sloppy, we slow it right down and get back into regiment. So do that for a few minutes. Um, then I'm taking focused, uh, I don't want to say this, I'm focusing in on one particular thing after that. So uh, the guys who've made YouTube videos of guitar playing, I've taken the pieces and parts of those that I really like the sound of. Ryan Packrat, one, is a guy I'll pick on here. I think he's a phenomenal guitar player. Excuse me, he has a very soulful blues uh, ear. I, I don't know how to say that any other way. Uh, the notes that he picks to accentuate and to uh, vibrato out and hold on to, and the ones that he tends to just sort of trip over or trill over, not trip over, but uh, I call it stumble over, you know, when you, brrimp, you know, just stumble over some notes, you, you sort of, you have them there, but you're skipping over them to get to the good one, the, the one with the, the power to it. Uh, he has the ability to, to very directly uh, get to the notes that he wants to and hold them like he wants to, just a lot of soul. So I've gone through his video, believe it or not, uh, I have my computer sitting right here, uh, gone through that note for note, lick for lick, and uh, figured out what he's doing and why it sounds good and why it sounds so much better than what I do, and uh, just trying to dissect that kind of stuff. So um, been doing that a lot. Uh, the other thing is with the computer here now, um, Spotify has access to every song ever recorded just about, and uh, so I'm going back and listening to some of the old blues greats and some of the old... Uh, songwriters who are just phenomenal uh, somebody told me a while back if you want your guitar to sing sound like it's singing uh, tune in to some singers some fantastic singers and pick out what they're doing note for note and make your guitar do that all of a sudden your guitar will sound like it's singing and uh, you know so true um, so I've been doing a lot of that exploration I would call it and really setting aside the things that I've played over and over and over again and uh, really trying to expand my musical horizons so uh, then the last few minutes of my practice have been you know certain things either technically that I want to work on or um, you know kind of special things let's call it you know like sweep picking or something along those lines or if there's uh, one particular phrase that I want to work on getting faster or something like that, you know, arpeggios, things like that. So very focused guitar practicing, and I intend to do that for the next year. Uh, want to work on my songwriting a little bit, uh, that sort of thing. And the reason is I've just had ideas up in here for a very, very long time and haven't been a good enough guitar player to play them. So uh, that's what I want to work on for the next year. That sort of puts the... Uh, Automotive projects, uh, let's call it on the back burner, not completely off off the uh, table because we're still going to be doing some automotive things. I still enjoy working on the cars, but there are going to be other projects that get much more of my attention. Uh, and again, I, I, don't, I wouldn't call these bucket list projects, but they're projects I want to do You know, before I die. They've been on my list. And uh, so anyway, that's what we'll be doing. We'll be doing some guitar building some guitar playing, some songwriting, some song recording, a little bit of automotive stuff, and uh, that's what the next year is going to look like. I'm slipping in just under 20 minutes here, guys. Don't let you move on.